Thousand Tales presents The Forgotten by Scott Godfrey Read by Matthew Carson It was pain that pushed the decision forward toward an inescapable conclusion. He was a scientist before who had been working on the effects of memory loss when the blast hit. Outside in the street, the explosion ripped fire through cars, a portion of the stone buildings to every side as well, and he had rushed out to help, only to find his wife dead. Just some random attack, and I was there, and I saw it happen. I saw him cradling her body, saw the wreckage, smelled the blood and oil, and I know all this, even if there is so much I do not. I am standing up right now. I am walking through my house, and there are pictures, men and women, and I don't know who they are. There are names scrawled, but I can't read them, and outside the sun is shining, and the people are gathered, and the house is warm, and I am watching this movie play out because I was there and I had the presence of mind to record it. And outside the people, if they want to, can look back on days that were up to a point, and that is why I am mentioning the man and the pain and the loss and the grief and his vengeance on all of us. You see, he felt she had been forgotten by everyone else. He felt her death had not moved enough people, and when a man is desperate and clever and angry and the world has done what the world so often does, he will attack. And if he is especially clever, it would be better to die than face that sort of wrath. He turned his attention to what he knew best, memory and its applications and its elimination. I'm not sure how he did it, but he did. I have the footage of him and his experiments, of his anger and rage, and he is smiling, smiling at me, as if he wants me to know how much he hates everyone now. I also have the footage of him being shot by officers in their black uniforms, but by then it had escaped. His masterpiece and the photographs were the only proof that his plague had taken effect. You see, he wanted the kind of torture that comes of both knowing and not knowing, that comes of forgetting and also knowing you've forgotten something so terribly important that's no longer in your life. It's worse than death. I am standing looking at a picture of myself and a woman, and she is old and gray and smiling, and I do not know who she is, and even with her name written here, the second I turn away, I remember it only as a scrawl of letters and nothing more. The same is true for tombstones, records, historical novels. And it only works once someone is dead. That was his genius, his masterstroke. Outside, people are playing, and should some masked man come and gun them down, he will utterly forget this happened, and all those loved ones, all those wonderful people will not know their children are dead, or parents, or siblings. But they will still have the pictures, and the uncertainty to gnaw at them cancerously. Or in rare cases, not at all. And it's not just our dead, or the dead I might have known. Religious books and historical novels are edited for content, and we can see the churches, the mosques, synagogues, the debris of countless faiths, but names escape us all. The details are smudged out of existence, and yet he left the words expressing the thought that if only you believed in this being or that being's words, you would be saved. But we can't remember who these beings were, being dead. And as for other works, novels, plays, Oh, we have all them but the details of the men and women who wrote them, even their names. Of this we have no memory. Nor when they were ever created, nor their appearances, nor the ages in which they lived. We cannot tell if our entire history is a day or a thousand years or a billion years, for every detail of the dead escapes into unbeing the moment we look away from it. 
We simply can't tell anymore how vast and old and young the world truly is. He tore the greater swath of our existence away and left those clues dangling just out of reach because his wife died and he felt no one remembered her. I'm sure if I could remember his face or his name, I would be angry at him. But the second I turn away from the footage, the details will again blur and shift out of my reach, and I will be left. With the vague feeling that this picture of this old woman by me is somehow important, and the caption which says this was our 40th wedding anniversary. I let the picture drop, and I turn away. The end.